Congratulations. Hi, this is so exciting. I'm just, just check I can see it here and yay. It says it's next, it's yeah. streaming live. So if someone's there, yep, it says there's a little live happening. Awesome. Yay. Yeah, awesome. Yes, I can see it. I can see it. So we are live. This is so exciting. So welcome, yay. Barry. Thanks, Angie. Good to yeah. see you. Hey, yeah, this is a, a bi-continental call. I'm in Canada and you're in Aussie. Absolutely. I love this. Isn't technology just amazing? I love it. I know. You can do this. Like, it's just, who would have thought, you know, 20 years ago that you'd be able to sit here in real time and talk to people on the other side of the world and see them and, even better, share it with the rest of the world. Sh live. <laughs> Immediately. Live. Exactly. So, yeah, so that's really cool. So, I'm so excited that you're here and that you're going to share with us your knowledge on the freedom, freedom, basically. I know that you've created awesome. freedom for yourself, so. Just let yeah, me introduce I did. You. Yeah, sorry, I'm just gonna say, let me introduce you first, so then you can tell us all about it. I'd really love that, so. So Gary is a very successful business coach, and he is the CEO of, and the publisher, sorry, of Choice, which is a magazine for um, coaches, professional coaching. So in Australia, we don't actually have that magazine. Um, just letting you know, Choice is a different thing for us. Choice magazine here is where Oh, they, yeah. Well, you get... Products. And, um, I have a lot of Australian subscribers to our magazine as well as the other one. Yes, I can imagine. So, yeah. So, congratulations. It's exciting. So, yes. Thank you. And I know from personal experience that you're an amazing coach. So, and you're now running your own programs on freedom. So, yeah. So when did you discover your calling to, to do that, to empower people about freedom? I am so thrilled to be here and work with you on this, or not work, to have a conversation with you. Working technology, I think we were all kind of thinking, you know, we we're just kind of in the ooh-ah of that at the beginning of this. But, uh, you know, it, it's interesting. You, you mentioned this like technology like 20 years ago and things like that, that this wouldn't have been possible. And it's actually about that time when I was looking at how do I be able to, it, oh, it started with, I want to go for lunch for one hour without anybody calling or needing me or running around like their, with their hair was on fire. That was it. And it, it quickly worked into, I wanted to have two weeks of vacation without anybody. Now remember 20 years ago, very little internet, introduction of cell phones, some email, right? and you know regular phones and i didn't realize at the time that why i was working so hard on that was because i wanted to have freedom and that freedom was a really important value for me and it's i did it but you know sometimes we do these things and we don't realize why we're doing it and i was creating this freedom for myself i was Oh, it's self-employed, but sometimes you work harder when you're self-employed than when you're employed by somebody else. But I just knew I couldn't be constrained in that corporate environment. And so I, I had to get out. And so, I mean, I'm kind of old. So this was a long time ago, over 30 years ago. I went out on my own and I, I could not go back. I'm what they call unemployable. Like you couldn't get me to work for somebody else. I don't think I would know how without hurting somebody, you know, or something or myself, you know, and freedom was that's when I first started working on my freedom. It was for myself. And eventually it just became the norm to continue to look for ways to be free of, to be able to work from anywhere. And that's why where coaching came in about 20 years ago it was perfect. Yeah. And I think it's, I mean, I applaud you, you know, cause I think it's a dream of so many, entrepreneurs I mean it's to have that flexibility and the freedom I mean have that laptop lifestyle is what so many people aspire mm. to you know to be able to just work from anywhere yeah it's just you know and and I amazing. offer that even to people who have bricks and mortar businesses mm. make your the whole thing is about making yourself redundant um, one of my favorite gurus was Tim Ferriss with the four-hour work week and he taught two groups of people mm -hmm. and one was the people that worked for others and then those of us who work for ourselves so as we know as self-employed as entrepreneurs we know we're in control of our destiny we just don't feel like we are sometimes <laughs> and on the other side now look what's happening right now with this virus 
and how many millions on millions, if not billions of people are not only at home, but they're working from home. And so you've now created this possibility of you don't need to go to an office. Like we've been forced into the possibility that we don't have to be in an office. We don't have to be in bricks and mortar. And I've long held this. And like I say, Tim Ferriss, he was a believer of that too. You get way more done if you're not going to a physical location because you don't get bothered by all that stuff, right? So right. there's huge possibility in this. And we've just been totally thrown into it overnight. And you and I, I mean, we've always worked this way pretty much. So it's nothing new for us. But there are other new things now that are challenging our freedoms. There are definitely are right now. Definitely. Yeah. Lots of things that are challenging our freedoms. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think that, like, you know, personally, I think that we'll come out of it. It'll be a different world and it'll be a, a yeah, very different in a lot of good ways. There's lots of good to come out of this. Yeah. You yeah, know, I think so too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what ways do you help some entrepreneurs who are struggling with freedom? Like, how do you... How do you well, help? you know, along the way, as I really, really made this my mission, and that's been in the last couple of years, I realized that there were at least five freedoms. I'm sure there are more, but I think they can be summarized in five. So there's financial freedom, location freedom, which we just talked about. There's time freedom, yes. freedom of self-expression, and mindset freedom. So I'm going to quickly go over all of them, but truthfully, as a good Coach, I would say to you, what do you think it means to you? And then that's where we work from. But I'm going to let you off the hook today, all, <laughs> all of us watching. Well, financial freedom is basically having enough money to do the things that you want in comfort and, you know, to be able to, yeah, to provide not just a livelihood, not just to survive, but to thrive. Mm -hmm. I think right now that might be a bit of a challenge for all of us. So, you know, the coaching was more futuristic and possibility based. Now it's a lot more circumstance based when I'm doing the coaching. Um, location freedom, we talked about that already. It's again thrust upon us. Uh, time freedom, okay, this one's really pretty amazing because when I was first started doing my free, free time boot camp, and it's now called Freedom Boot Camp because I've also made some realizations. And I, I came to realize when I was uh, teaching my first courses, uh, first round of courses in the beta a year and a half ago, about one third of the people in the group didn't even own a calendar. Like, I don't know how to exist without a calendar. I have it synced between my computer and my phone. And I'm not, and I'm not saying it to make people wrong, but how you have time freedom if you don't know what your time's being spent on or that you're in some sort of semblance of control of your time. Yes. And I don't mean control as in control freak. I just mean as in boundaries. And I think yes. that's what I want most people to get out of our, you know, getting together today is in this new era of COVID-19 and self-isolation and working from home, if you, you may be used to working from home, like I'm saying you and I even, or whoever's watching, but also there, you know, all of a sudden we have everybody else at home. So for example, my husband's a hairdresser. He's not essential service. He was forced to close. What does he do all day? You know, like how do I get my job done? What, you know, do I now have to help keep him busy? You know, and then we also have a student we're putting through school. There's no school. What does he do? You know, so it's, it's a whole new world. And I think boundaries are really big. So for example, I was telling Angie, like for you guys, it's 9 a.m. in Australia, up here at 6 p.m. Just before this call, I, it was my turn to make dinner. We take turns. So there's some boundaries already. And I knew I had this call, so I did what I could and left minor instructions on how to just keep it going. And as soon as this call's over, I go out, finish, we sit down and we eat dinner right? And TVs are off, phones are off the table, and we have our usual structured conversation. And I think that's another good thing too, is, is I'm noticing what routines can you keep in place? Like, for example, our gym is closed. And in the building we live in, and the one across the street where we normally go to. So oh what did God. we do? We created a little home gym, like, okay, I'm not a home gym fan, okay? Like, lame or letter word I know but for me it's lame but I, I have to do something because I my 
person, my physical well-being is important to me. So I pulled out some stuff we had in the cupboard, a stability ball, two 15 pound weights, some stretchy bands and a, 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 a yoga mat and took out my book that I have at the gym and where I track my stuff. I decided what I was going to do and started doing it. And we're learning how, you know, everybody's offering things online now too. So now there's support for, for us doing this stuff from home, little different things to keep it interesting and exciting like we would at the gym anyway, but in the confines of our little area in the condo. So it's been pretty good, you know? So I think back to the original thing, I really thought that today would be important to talk about not just free time, but, but freedom around uh, boundaries and things like that. So I think that's a, a key importance for everybody right now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah. So what is what are some tools that you would um help people with? Like if, if they're yeah. busy, they're overwhelmed or you know Yeah. They don't like well, you maybe know, now they're lost. Like they're yeah. lost. Um yeah. within, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well I've alluded to some of the tools already. So one is keep a routine. Yes. So whatever you're doing before, try to do it in this new age and world. Ask for help. Like I needed help with dinner. I needed help. You know, it's like, can you do this? Can you do that? Um, and boundaries, set some boundaries. And I think the other one I'm just realizing too, in this conversation is give each other some space. Try not to be in each other's space. Like try to, you know, even if you need to call a, a, a I don't know what you would call it. I, like, but a timeout, but, a but, a let's all have some breathing space and, you know, let read a book, you know, uninterrupted alone time. Like I'm fortunate. I can close the door. I have an office in the condo, so that's fine. And we all seem to be managing it, but I think we all knew that we needed to have our own space. So during a day, you won't find all three of us in the same room most of the time. So there's enough space, but for those that aren't enough space, how do you accommodate that? So, you know, there's looking at things like that to do. I was talking to one uh, colleague, he's in uh, West Vancouver, and he ended up moving into, before this all hit, really hit the fan, they could still go. He and his, uh, his wife and two kids were in a 700 square foot condo, and they saw the writing on the wall, and they booted it out to mom's place, and, where she's got like a 2,000 square foot home. Oh, wow. So he's work. They're both working from there. The kids are there. And guess what? There's a built in babysitter. Da -da. You know, they get to keep an eye on and grandma and grandma gets to keep an eye on the kids and everybody's happy. Right. So, you know, we need to be flexible. Maybe that's another thing to add flexible. But, you know, when I when I originally thought like under normal circumstances, some of the tools I use and they may still apply now is take a look at what you're doing. Can you eliminate it? Can you automate it? And can you delegate it? So that's yeah. usually the three primary tools I use. And it, it's interesting because they're interchangeable and goes back and forth. So give me an example. So I'm looking at something and I'm saying, okay, I want to delegate this. And I start to write a procedure or do, you know, I, I like doing video training, you know, so I'll do it and I'll ship it off to somebody on my team who I'm going to get to do the work so I can do other stuff. And then I start doing it and I'm like, so why do I do that? And why do I do that? And why do I do that? So I start eliminating stuff already. And sometimes I just end up going, okay, why the heck was I doing any of this before this? Right? So sometimes heading into giving something up, you could just give up the whole thing and go, you know, I used to, here's an example for me. I used to keep this Google spreadsheet and I used to update my cash flow meticulously every day. I would look at all the bank accounts, I'd update everything, and then then for some reason I stopped doing it. Like life happens, you know, that kind of thing. And then I started to go back to it. I'm like, why am I doing this? Like it gives me a good sense. Bottom line is if there ain't no money in the bank, there ain't no bills getting paid today. That's it. And don't get me wrong. I have a commitment to keeping money flowing because I'm a believer that money needs to flow. Like it's, it's an energy. And so if times are tough, like they are now, do what you can do, not what you maybe normally would have done, but what you can do to keep the money flowing because you may not be in a super tight spot, but somebody else might. 
you know, they're asking you everybody to um, like, if you had a, you know, a dog walker still pay them because that's the only way they were making money. Mm -hmm. You know, if you had a, uh, uh, somebody doing your lawn or somebody coming and cleaning your house, do what you can to keep paying them because that's what they were living on. Now you're okay, but they're not, you know what I mean? So if you can do it anyway, we digressed a long ways off of it. Where were we? Bring me back. Rain me in my dear. Rain me in. I could get going on freedom all day long. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about tools, about three yes. most effective tools that you can um, use to help people. So, Eliminate, yeah. automate, delegate. Yeah, that's really, really good, isn't it? And I think like yeah. the, you know, automation is amazing things, you know. I mean, I, I yeah. actually say that too in my things. You know, if you, if you do something more than a couple of times, if you repeat a task more than a couple of times, then find a way to save time. So, you know, do you, can you create templates? Can you create yeah. checklists? Can you, like, what can you do to save yep. you? You know, because there's lots of little things. It doesn't have to be a big, massive thing, but... No nope. little chunks of time over time save a lot of time. Yeah. And that's yeah. my goal. That's my goal. So it, that's perfect. And what I, I say that, and I give it a time limit. If it's something that takes you that you do that same way every week mm. or month, or in my case, because the magazine's a quarter quarterly, it's something that you can give away. And then I have to deal with my ego, which says, well, I'm the only one that knows how to do this properly. And you need to let that go. So that's a little bit of mindset freedom advice is guess what? With the way things are going now with automation and, and there are people that know how to do your stuff better than you do. And baby, your fear should be, they're going to show you up because they do this for a living. Okay. So look out. Yeah. 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 I, it's fun. You know, Angie, if I wasn't able to delegate the stuff I delegate, if I was still doing absolutely everything, I wouldn't have been able to grow my business to be able to even be on this call. Wouldn't even, I would have been exhausted or doing something else that quite frankly is routine that, yeah, it's, it's, and you know, we talked about the technology. It's changed so much. I mean, I look at some of the stuff that I used to do and we're doing a massive change right now from a fairly manual processing of order system for the magazine to where it's going to be click a button. That's our goal. And it's going to click a button to my bookkeeper. So I don't have to do all the manual manipulation of all the numbers. I press a button. Well, I don't even have to do that. At the end of the month, it's automated. She gets the report. Bingo. I just saved myself time again. So I think a word of advice and wisdom in all this is, is keep an open mind, be coachable, and be open to contribution. Other people mm -hmm. can do, I always hire people that can do shit, sorry, I know that's not a loud word, can do stuff better than I can. That's who I hire. The trick is, you know enough that they can't bullshit you. That's my rule. And oh, then absolutely. let it go and let it go. And if they make a mistake, oh, for heaven's sakes, you did too. So just let it go and breathe through it. I, one of my team members, she, we made a major faux pas the other day. And I was like, hey, I, I kind of owned it and said, maybe I didn't train properly. Maybe I didn't learn properly. She was all freaked out. And I'm like, it's done. There's nothing we can do about it. Hey, it's going to happen. Will it happen again? not on her watch <laughs> <laughs> no exactly exactly yeah and i think yeah. too the thing is that we like when especially as we're starting like entrepreneurs and starting we tend to do everything ourselves because often the cash is a lot tighter and so we can't yeah, do any straw to to um have you know employ other people or delegate it out even in small mm -hmm. chunks but i think the thing is that everybody has different skills everyone's good at different things aren't they like you mm -hmm. know i mean like you know some people are really good at doing bookkeeping and other people because the systems and the, that stuff is just not their thing. You know, they're more yeah. out there with networking or whatever, you know, so it's yeah, important, isn't exactly. it? To focus on your strengths yeah. and delegate what is not your strength. Well, and to that point that, you know, I didn't start and deliver half of my business overnight to the 12, 10 or 12 people that are working with me. Yeah. And remember they're not working full time. These are virtual assistants. These are so 
for those of you that are new to the virtual world, let's say, there are people and they'll work an hour, two hours a month for you. Wow, well, how much is that gonna cost you? 25 bucks, can you not forgive 25 bucks for the purpose of saving yourself an hour where you charge out 50, 100, $150 an hour for your services? Like how much it's, when I work on giving people time freedom, I say, okay, I want you to block an hour in the next seven days that you will hold like guard with your life. And secondly, decide what you're going to do with that hour and not work. Okay. So that could be read a book, go for a walk, call a friend, call your mom, just something like that. Right. And if you were to consider giving up, getting, delegating enough, eliminating, automating, or delegating enough stuff to give yourself one hour a week. And by the way, you start to love it and you'll do it more like I do. That's, that could be $150. You know, that, how much is your hour worth to you yeah. for you to be doing something like bookkeeping where I think my bookkeeper does it for, well, for my magazine business is a hundred bucks a month. Like I don't even think twice about giving her that money. It's just like, and the less work I can do with that, I'm seriously with this new system. I'm like, let's keep it simple, stupid, you know, like the goal, set the intention. And to go back to what I said is I didn't give everything away overnight. I, I committed to it and yeah. I send it, send it off in chunks. And then every once in a while you have to redo it and it becomes simpler and cheaper and you know, don't just give it away and then expect that it won't change either, right? Like it'll come back at you and you'll have, it gives you the opportunity to look at eliminating, automating, or delegating all over again. It's like this new store system I was saying. It's like, we can just, you know, we have the opportunity to make it up. So we set, well, we want this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. And in the end, we're gonna save time and money and have the capacity to handle tons more people with this new system. So yeah. is it painful in the beginning? Probably. Are you gonna get frustrated watching someone else try to do it? Most definitely. <laughs> but just stay with your commitment that you're more committed to having freedom than you are to being locked into your business. Yeah. And work on revenue generating activities instead or hire somebody to do that if you're, that's not your forte. Yeah. So many things, so many things, I think, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. So I, I had a good question to ask you and it's just lost my mind. So it'll come back in about two seconds. So, you know, so okay. I know it was. So what could you, what advice could you give people right now, given the current situation, you know, like yeah. right now, what can people do right now to do that, to carve that extra hour away a week? What can they do? Uh, go to your calendar and literally carve an extra hour out. And it's not an extra hour because you no. can't <laughs> add to it. No. This is you and... I will guarantee you that all the work will still get done. We will fill empty spots because they're empty to be filled. But if conversely, if you block an hour and I want you to, t you know, go to your electronic device, go to your paper calendar, go get a calendar, block an hour and don't let anybody take it. I dare you. I, ab I, I double dare you. And you'll start to see what I'm talking about we just keep working because there's nothing else in there to fill it with and have a strong why. Like here's an example for me. I carve out an hour to, to every day normally to go to the gym. Now my life has changed. Can't go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. We heard all about that. But now it's about carving the hour out to go do the work here which is a little bit more difficult because yeah. I can easily get distracted by like a load of laundry or, you know, a cup of coffee or, you know, Oh, why don't I just go do that? Get in my gym outfit, go do it, record it in the book, just sit there and do it or sit there and actively do it. That's what's important to me. Pick something that's important to you. Here's something in this day and age with this COVID stuff is go for a walk. I'll bet you, if you're like me, you're a little anxious about going out. According to all the regulations, it's okay to go out and get some fresh air, go for a walk, just stay away. You know, if you're in a building like mine, no, we don't allow more than three people in the elevator. Quite frankly, I don't want to go on with anybody right now. Um, and that's totally fine. Everybody understands. And just stay six to 10 feet away from somebody else. Well, 
there's nobody else out there, so it's not a problem. <laughs> but I, that's the thing I would highly suggest. Yeah. Or take a bath. Set the time to take a bath. Just give yourself a really strong why. Block it, block it first, then give yourself a why, and then defend it with your life. Yes, yeah. And the thing is, it made you feel so much better and more energized, so you actually do come back more productive anyway, don't you? You know. Exactly. So. I always find, Angie, that when I go to the, I, I'm like, every, every other day, I'm like, oh, do I really want to go to the gym? Oh, you know. But I just, I just block out the negative, you know, the resistance, and I go. And sure enough, when I'm done, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I went. Right. And you feel so, so much better. <laughs> yeah, better. and I feel that way about the hour, and I feel that way about a walk. You know, all mm. that anything. But just mm -hmm. remember, this is, we're talking about time for you. We're talking about your sanity, your health, your well-being. You know, everybody will be better off if we took some time for ourselves. Absolutely. And it's so easy as um, entrepreneurs just to keep working because there is so much to do, especially when you're starting off, you know, and you've got to get the systems in place. And it is just yeah. like, there is so many things that need to be done. Yeah. And yeah. it's very easy uh, just to keep going uh, <laughs> and going. Honey. Honey, it's been 30 years. It's still go. I, you should see there's little piles all around behind me. Nothing you can see, but it's all just, and it's all going, Gary, 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 Gary. It just doesn't end. And then, you know, the more I, I you know, this is, I'm, I'm starting to talk to you a lot of it, but it's starting to, you know, be to a point now where I get so excited about the new stuff. It's actually like, think of your, yourself and your energy and your time as a bucket of water. Yeah. Okay. And it's full. Okay. Try and put something else in it. What happens? You like put your hand in it, it overflows. But the good news is if you take some water out, there's room for that hand to go in. And that's that hour that you just created. And what I'm finding is I get all jazzed when I automate, delegate, and eliminate, because then it just leaves room. It creates the room in the bucket. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, now I can take some time to focus on that one that just needed a bit of more thought and brainstorming and so many more ideas come out when other in the day-to-day -day stuff kind of gets moved out of the way absolutely and then, yeah, yeah I agree. And you know, you're right when you start it's not as easy but if you're committed to doing it and you look you can you can just decide to just automate everything maybe you can't delegate but automation is so inexpensive now oh absolutely you know lots of you know emails can be automated and there's oh. so many things, you know, that you can do to all yeah. can't you, you know. And I just, yeah. what you were talking about, I mean, I'm into the law of attraction and um, people that know me know that I have, you know, things on Facebook about the law of attraction and all that sort of thing. Yeah, love it. But um, yeah, and one of the things is it's all about, it's, it's creating that vacuum, you know, like yeah. you, can't, you can't get the new ideas and you can't get the new, the intuition and all of that stuff. If you're so full of doing stuff, there's no room for any new to come in. So you have to clear the old out, the old yeah. ideas, the old, like delegate, whatever, get rid of stuff mm -hmm. so that there's room for the new to come in, you know? Yeah. I, you know how I also do that is I, um, I kind of, you know, I, these piles pile up, right? And folders get created and stuff gets put in it. And then every once in a while, I just grab some of the folders and go, oh, why am I keeping this? gone shred whatever and it's like if i can't remember why i stored it in the first place it's gone i'm not worried about it because you're right that leaves opening for fresh ideas and i also find a little bit of peace in sorting through things too to just you know recycle paper and you know just just clean up and it just i'm that's my like brain shut off time because it's it's you know i'm not really you know, it's not really a focused activity. I mean, it is to sort, but it's not, you know, it's not like I'm trying to think up something new, a brainstorm. And then it's like being in the shower kind of thing where, oh my gosh, that's what I'm going to write about tomorrow. Or that's who I'm going to call tomorrow. Right. That kind of thing. So oh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Oh, yeah. I mean, decluttering is like, oh, so I love it. Yeah, me I too. Love it. It's like and it's, and it's a really key too. You asked me some of the other things. One of the other is, where are you out of integrity? And if you have a cluttered car, a dirty car, a dirty desk, and I get, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying a dirty desk, but a messy desk, and it's not serving you, 
time to clean it up because it just that's a, another way that your energy gets drained trying to think through that's why all the piles are behind me they have to actually speak up for me to hear because i can't see them i try to keep stuff out of my line of sight when i'm working on something or working with someone yeah it's very easy i understand you know i got very busy here for a while and it was just like dumping stuff you know like just yeah. dumping all of a sudden you look at it and you're going uh, uh, I can't do this. Yeah. It's got to. It's got to get. I got like now. It's all clear, and you know, there's nothing. Yeah. Just it's lovely. Yeah, so, exactly. I really love it. So, yeah. So, Gary, I really appreciate you coming and talking to us today. Thanks. It's, it's been great just being here. Awesome. Um. So, how can the listeners find out more about you? Like, where? Well, where can they connect you? What can they find out? Yeah. Well, go to freetimebootcamp.com and download my life free lifestyle planner where these five freedoms are mentioned. So it's freetimebootcamp.com and uh, right on the top right hand corner, there's a download for the life lifestyle freedom planner. And in there will be the five freedoms, some questions for yourself and uh, my request when you use it. Well, two requests. One is just be with it. Don't rush it. Don't feel like it's a piece of homework you have to do. Just read through it. The last page is the only page that has actionable items, one for each freedom. Ah, uh, okay. And, right? But the rest of them are all inquiries. And in the coaching world, an inquiry is something that you just, you sit with. You don't answer right away. You know, it's like, so, um, you know, what, what, how much, you know, anything about any one of the freedoms. Read the document. And you can always reach me, Gary at choice-online.com. And Angie, I know you're going to put all this stuff on the on your Facebook page. And, you know, give me a call, set up a call. I'm happy to talk to anybody. I'm like, I'm working virtually. I can do it. Yay. And I've got time. I've got some free time because I know how to do it. I'm the guru <laughs> of it. Awesome. Yep, I will. I'll definitely put this below the, yeah. the live. And, um, yeah, I really thank you so much for coming and oh, sharing for me. how people can can find freedom, especially now. It's a, there's so much yeah. going on. It's important yeah. that they do have some freedom too. So, yeah. and it's a you. different version of freedom now. So, yeah, we got to be much more rigorous with our time and our boundaries. So, I welcome everyone to you know touch base with Angie. She's awesome. And uh, if something resonates with you uh, and you want to reach out to me, go for it. I'm um, I'm here, standing by the phone. Oh, yay! <laughs> Thank you so, so much. All right, Angie. All right. Thank Take you. care, my Take friend. Care. Bye. Bye.